Hi. Well, we meet again, and finally, to end the lecture number two about research databases. And we started from primary databases that have mostly annotation from a kind of sequence. DNA sequences, genome sequences, that are DNA sequences, and proteins. And now research databases get more and more complicated as long as we have questions to them. And there have been developed integrated databases that have not only DNA sequences and protein sequences cross-referenced, but also integrates other information. One of the integrated database is gene cards. Gene cards, it's a database that is based on genes and based on human genes. It's gene-centered and it has the capability of and allows you to search for a gene name. So we have been studying TBP gene from human and you can search on the gene cards and check the gene card for TBP. It's a protein coding gene and it's called data box binding protein, confirming the information previously obtained. And it has the main information and generic information at aliases and here you have the name, the full name, the different names and designations of the same gene and you have access and cross-references to entry gene that is at the NCBI, an ensemble genome database, a meme, it has to do with Mendelian inherited um, diseases and Uniprot, the protein database. Also, you can go and check the disorders associated, domains of the proteins, drugs that are developed and associated with this um, particular gene, how it is expressed, the function, the genomics, and the genomics allows you to check where is it located and remember that when you saw the different kind of uh, um, location of TBP gene, it was on chromosome 6. You have here the number of the base pair where it starts and ends, the length of the gene, and it's on the plus strand, on the forward strand, as we have already mentioned. And it has a location that is on the longer arm of the chromosome and it's on the uh, band 27. And you have the different databases. Entre is the genome at NECBI and Ensemble, the European Genome Database. And you have also the references and the session numbers to access to TBP gene. Also relevant it's the variants where you can find some SNP IDs, some single nucleotide polymorphisms that sometimes this variability among a population has impacts. The transcripts are the mRNA available and as mentioned there are two transcripts, two main transcripts that um, allows the production of two isoforms of the same protein. Also you can have access to the pathways that this protein is involved and it is involved in transcription as you can see here and other information that you may it may be relevant 
are the paralogs. So the human, pro this human protein has paralogs in the human being. There are more than one TBP gene coding for proteins that may hold different or slightly different functions. It's resulting from duplication of the gene. Also, in studies and as we started, we know other organisms that may help the study of the human genome and the human functions and the human diseases. So it's really relevant to know the orthologs the other species that we already know the same gene. And we know it from Bosch Taurus, that is the cow. And for cow, for dog, for mouse, chimpanzee, rat, the chicken, and also for the frog and other species like Saccharomyces, that is a, um, a fungi, and some plants like the rice and the bread mold, other fungi. We have sequences of cDNAs that are signed with XM or NM and sequences for proteins that are signed with NP or XP. And these sequences exist because of speci speciation and evolution of organisms, though they are the same gene, but they exist in different species. And these are relevant to compare and get to know which of the cDNA or protein sequences are closer to the TBP from human. And that may be very useful when you're studying a function or a disease caused or test some drugs that are associated with certain gene from the human body. So we're in the integrated database called Gene Cards. And Gene Cards is gene-centered, like everything about a gene is described there with cross-reference to many different databases. And it was started in 1997, and as it's unexpected, it is located in the Institute of Science in Israel. Also, other kind of integrated database, like sequence retrieval system of European Biotechnology Institute in the UK, that uh, put together a lot of databases, mainly from EMBL, Protein Data Bank, Interpro about protein domains and motifs, ProSide, protein families, and all integrated at Swiss Prot. Although this SRS system have been discontinued and we can we could at that time look for some sequences according to the taxonomy and the organism that we wanted if it has annotations at the omim database about diseases and also retrieve sequences from different kinds of databases simultaneously Aside with the European Molecular Biology Laboratory, we 
we have the NCBI, the National Center for Bio Biological Information of National Institute of Health from USA, where you can have access to entry where you have information and retrieval about a certain search, all the databases from DNA, from diseases, from variants, from genome, from literature, and also proteins. So this um, gives you a profile of your search. Returning the number of results you have in each database. For example, in several that uh, the several papers published at PubMed about TBP would be represented and also the nucleotide sequences that were submitted to entry system and available at NCBI. But there is not only this integrated databases. There are many other research databases that are relevant, like online Mendelian inheritance in man, like the diseases that have inheritance and they are very well known and very well annotated. Very important also the human gene mutations database where you can see that some gene mutations are associated with diseases or other kind of reactions. One of the other databases that we will focus our studies will be PharmJKB. It's based on variants and the impact that the genomic information, the genotyping of a, a human, it may have differences on drugs if effects. Also, Genes and Genomes Kyoto Encyclopedia has an annotation for genome and other databases related to genontology that allows the communication about a certain function of a gene or a protein that has three main uh, categories of annotation. Cellular component, process and molecular function. There are also other databases about microarrays that will be a other subject that we will focus on later. PharmJKB may be considered a integrated database because it has integrated knowledge from primary pharmacogenomic literature until the clinical annotation and it has different levels of evidence for an association between a gene variant and the drugs and association to the drug effect. Kyoto Encyclopedia uh, of Genes and Genomes has some function and utilities, so it has some level of molecular information that is related also to the metabolism. One of the most interesting things in variability is that all of us have the same genome but has difference between one to the other. Even when your family you have certain differences among each member. This variability is related to repeats that may happen, that may have different sizes. Variable numbers of tandem repeats 
are larger, microsatellites are smaller repeats, or better, the short uh, sequence that is repeated is from one to five base pairs and is related to some diseases. Single nucleotide polymorphisms are a single nucleotide difference and it is sometimes related to different effects of a farm uh, um, a drug. And of course there have been uh, a huge focus on variability. One of the relevant SNP databases is located at NIH and these are some other references to different databases and the aspects that are detailed in each database. Other databases that are related to names, terms, nomenclature and other that sometimes are interested and associated with diseases and some of them like patients like me are social networks that help some patients with rare diseases but you have some kind of nomenclature that are very strict to um, human genome and human genes and to related to cancer 23 and me you should visit um, it is possible to get your genome sequenced although you really need to be prepared in bioinformatics many researchers who describe their work as bioinformatics don't program at all, but rather use programs written by others. And it's tempting to ask, do I really need to learn programming to do bioinformatics? At one level, the answer is no. And by now, you don't. But you will, with these databases, you will get sequences and you will perform some use of existing programs in order to interpret and to answer some questions. So for now, that's it about research databases. I hope you enjoyed this lecture number two. I hope to see you soon performing these exercises and then following to the next lecture. Thanks for your attention. Meet you soon.